Hey, what's up, pussies? Um, doing a career review on Tommy Hearns. Tommy hit my hands. Let's get right into it. All right, so Tommy Hearns, uh, his amateur record is 155 and 8, but reports are varying the number of wins by stoppage. They include 7, 11, and 12. Tommy Hearns did not have that many wins uh, by stoppage in his amateur career. Very few. He wasn't a hard punch in the amateur. Um, a lot of people in amateurs aren't really the hardest punches because a lot of them, you know, a lot of uh, fighters that are in the amateurs, their kids never fully developed and, you know, they haven't developed the proper punching technique and also the gloves that they're wearing as well has a lot more, you know, padding in it and they're also wearing head guard as well and whatnot and they've only got like three rounds to, you know, do their business. So, three, four rounds to do their business. So, um, you know, they're not really going to get many knockouts. So, um, it was the 1975 Bantam's Bantamweight silver medalist at the National Golden Gloves Tournament. It was the 1976 lightweight silver medalist at the National Golden Gloves Tournament. Um, he has a win over Pat Jefferson. I don't know who that is. But he lost, and he lost to Aaron Pryor in amateurs. Uh, there's actually, well, last time I checked, there was video of it on YouTube. I don't know if it's still on there. Um, I think Tommy Hearns actually got a standing count in that fight. Um, 1976 lightweight silver medalist at the National Amateur Athletic Union Tournament. Results beat Howard Jones, but he also lost to Howard David Jr., Howard Davis Jr. Um, on points. He's a, you know, um, uh, he was a known professional fighter. I think he was also an Olympian as well. Um, might have won a gold medal, Howard Davis Jr. from memory serves me correctly. Um, 1977 National Golden Gloves Light World Weight Champion. Um, he beat some guy called Curtis Hockenberry. He beat Ronnie Shields. That's a familiar name. And Bobby Joe Young, which is also not a familiar name. And if you don't know Bobby Joe Young, yes, Bobby Joe Young is the first guy to actually defeat Aaron Pryor as a pro. That was an upset. Um, he stopped him in seven rounds. Um, and then he was the 1977 National Amateur Athlete Union Light Worldweight Champion. And there you go. That's it. So Tommy Hearns had a respectable amateur career. Um, I think he did fight a little bit internationally. Um, but he, 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 for, for the most part, he was he fought at national, um, he fought at national level. Um, he was being trained by Manny Stewart uh, at the Crunk Gym and he turns pro um, with Manny Stewart. So, just getting to his pro career now. Um, so, he starts, turns pro on 25th of November 1977, just a bunch of, you know, filler fights to pad his record and, you know, um, basically, you know, refine his skills. Nothing really that interesting. He didn't knock out Bruce Finch in three rounds on the way up. Um, he also beat Clyde Green. On ten rising decisions, Clyde Gray was the same guy that fought Naples, right? Was did didn't Naples beat him on fifty round uh fifty round you know decision? I'm just trying to remember because, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, that is him. Um, be a guy called Bonnie Grant. I feel like I know that name somewhere, but I'm not gonna click on it because you know I can't be asked. Um, who else? Uh. I'll be also beat Harold Weston on the way up, Bruce Curry. Um, yeah, and that's really nothing really important. He also got a ten round United decision over Mike Cole, but he he fought um, Marvin Hagler and Sugar and Leonard. Wait, did he fight Sugar and Leonard? I know he fought Marvin Hagler, Mike Mike Cole, but Marvin Hagler took him in what was it twelve rounds, something like that. Um, but yeah, not really much until he steps up for the WA Worldweight title against Pipino Quavers, who was literally like had a bunch of title defences and was stopping like almost everyone in his path. Um, you know, he that guy's a serious puncher him, uh Pepino Quavers. And, you know, he'd um he had wins over the likes of Angel Espada. I don't know why they fought three times. I don't understand that. <laughs> Especially when he stopped him every single time. Um Clyde Gray knocked him out in two rounds. Harold Weston stopped him uh in between rounds. Billy Backers took him out in two rounds. Billy Backers was the same guy that beat Jose Napoles and cuts. Um, in an upset before Jose Naples went on to beat him in their rematch on cuts as well. Um, Pete Ranzani um, stopped him in two. Scott Clark stopped him in two. Went distance with Randy Shields and also beat Angel Spada again and knocked out Harold uh, Volbrecht in five rounds. So he was, you know, beating everyone in his path. He was he came off a 10 round unanimous decision against uh, a 10 round unanimous decision loss against Andy Price um, before. Actually, changed for the world title. I don't know if that's a controversial decision or what, or maybe it was a late replacement, which is why he got the title shot. You know, Andy Price is the same guy that um, Sugar and Leonard not tied one round on the way up, I think, it's for the NABF title. But in the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, in uh, Tommy Hearns' hometown, Tommy Hearns took him out two rounds. 
completely sniped him. Uh, Quavos was never in the same fight ever since. Tommy Hearns defends his title on the 6th of December 9 8 against Luis Primera. Takes him out of six rounds, easy fight. 25th of April 1981. Uh, Tommy Hearns faced off against Randy Shields. Tommy Hearns dominates the fight. The fight gets stopped in 12 rounds because um, Randy Shields, his team, refused to let him come out for the 13th round. Uh, Randy Shields took the shots where he didn't go down. Uh, Pablo Baez took him out in four rounds. Pablo Baez had a 10 9 and 2 record challenging for a world title. I mean, shit. Say what you want about today's boxing, but if so far I had a record like that challenging for a world title, especially coming off Pablo Baez's form, everyone would be having a riot. You know what I mean? But I do not hear people ever talk about this in the craziest things that happen in boxing. I, I don't like shit. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he was able to challenge the world title. I don't know who was responsible for that. And then the 6th of September, the long, you know, the anticipated fight between Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns happened. Tommy Hearns was winning the fight. But Sugar Ray Leonard was able to take him out in the 14th round. And that was Tommy's last fight at 147. And then he moves up to 154. He fights uh, early single tree on the undercard of Muhammad Ali versus Trevor Burbick. Um, this is actually not a bad fight, but Tommy has managed to win on um ten round you know, decision. The fight after he takes out Marcus Gerardo in one round, and a lot of people said that that fight was fixed. That Gerardo took a dive and whatnot in the fight, but when you look at the replays, Tommy Hearns clips him with a right hand, I believe. It may not be the hardest looking right hand, but he'd also got hit with um a couple of shots before then, and the right hand might have just you know sealed the deal when he might have already been a little bit you know bewildered or whatnot but i do admit at first class it doesn't look like the most convincing knockout um on the 25th of july um uh 1982 he faced off against jeff mccracken stops, stops him in eight rounds not really much to say about that one and then the 3rd of december 1982 he faced off against wolfer Benitez for the wbc world superweight title in superdome new orleans tommy hearns practically dominated the fight you know he had Benitez, you know cautious I guess Benitez was cautious of um, getting caught with a big, powerful right hand from Tommy Hearns and whatnot. Um, Tommy Hearns did end up dropping uh, um, Wilfred Benitez in the fight. He clipped him with a right hand. Um, Benitez's glove touched the canvas. The referee scored as a knockdown. But later on in the fight... Um, oh, and Tommy Hearns also had a point deducted for pulling, pulling, pulling Benitez's head down. But later on in the fight, um, Benitez um, apparently scored a knockdown on Tommy Hearns. You know, uh, Benitez threw a punch and then Tommy Hearns went f flying to the ground. But you see that Benitez is actually stepping on Tommy Hearns' foot and Tommy Hearns went flying to the ground. But the referee called out as a knockdown anyways, you know. But Tommy Hearns clearly won the fight. It was called a majority decision for God knows what reason. But Tommy Hearns becomes two-time um, or two-weight, two-time, two-weight world champion um, with his victory, which is a very good win um, for Tommy Hearns at that point. You know, um, I don't think Benitez was really the same fight ever since um, the Tommy Hearns fight. So this might have been the last fight we really saw um, of, you know, a world-class a world -class version of Benitez. You know, um, what else? Uh, yeah, but this fight was supposed to happen um, in February 1981. But the promoter disappeared because he's involved with some fraud, scam, and whatnot. The guy was using a fake name and he had to do like 10 years in prison. some crazy shit. You can read about it on Box Rec. It's insane. Um, Tommy Hearns fights against uh, Maurice, Su Maurice Sutherland. Beats him on 10 rounds. And I recognize that name somewhere. And yeah, Maurice Sutherland is a light heavyweight. I don't know what he's doing at 160 or something. But he came down to 160 to fight Tommy Hearns. I guess that paycheck might, you know, was kind of sweet. But yeah, he was a light heavyweight. And he came all the way to middleweight to fight Tommy Hearns, which is, you know, kind of crazy, you know, and he went the distance. Sorry if people, it's going a bit slow. At the 11th of February, uh, 1984, he faced off against Luigi Minchilo. That went 12 rounds. Not really much to say about the fight. I think uh, Tommy Hearns, after the fight, grabbed the mic and started praising Luigi for how tough he was or something like that. Or was that a different opponent? Can't remember. 
On the 15th of June 1984, Tommy Hearns faced off against Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran had never been knocked out before in a fight, but that soon changed as Tommy Hearns literally clipped Duran, dropped him like two, three times in the very first round. And then in the second round, he nuked him with that big right hand when not Duran face first and he was out of it. Duran could not get into the fight whatsoever. In some of the fights I've seen of Duran, he's usually rolling with the punches a lot. You know, so even if you do hit him, you never really hit him clean. He's always, you know, able to stay single to punch. But with Tommy Hearns, he was not able to do that, even though he tried. Like, he just couldn't get started. Like, the physical advantage, physical, like, difference between the two is insane. You know, like, Tommy Hearns took out Duran easier than, you know, um, anyone else had to, anyone else was able to at that point. And Duran was coming off a decent performance or impressive performance against Marvin Hagler. When he took him the 15 round distance, which is the first time anyone had taken Hagler the distance since um, um, the Vito Antofermo fight, the first fight, um, where that fight ended up in a draw, you know, and Hagler was stopping everyone um, up, you know, um, after that, you know, because he didn't want to, you know, get jobs in the cards again. You know, and Duran was able to take him 15 rounds despite being a, a, you know, a lightweight in the beginning of his career. So, yeah, Tommy Hearns literally destroyed him. Um... 15th of September 1984, Tommy Hearns destroys Fred Hutchins in three rounds. Not really much to say about that fight. And then on the 15th of April 1985, face off against Marvin Hagler in a long awaited fight. They were supposed to fight in 1982 in Canada, but um, Tommy Hearns got an injury, I think a hand injury, something like that. And then when the fight got rescheduled, Tommy Hearns wanted it to be moved to Detroit. Something like that, Marvin Hagler refused, and then the fight got called off then. But I was able to finally fight in. Um, Vegas 985 and you know it was a war the first round you know Hagler hurt uh, um, Hearns hurt Hagler with the big right hand and everything it was a crazy 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 fight but Hagler, Hagler was about to lose the fight because the cut that Tommy Hearns has caused with one of his power punches you know they checked the cut and Hagler didn't want to risk losing the fight so he went right for it and he clipped Tommy Hearns with a right hook and Tommy Hearns went down and that was it. And, you know, even though this is a great fight and whatnot, a very good fight, even though it didn't last that long, I think this fight is what kind of, you know, messed up Tommy's punch resistance. You know, because even though Tommy went on to do good things after this fight, his punch resistance ever since had just been shaky. Like, he never had a great chin to begin with. But in his fights at 147 and 154, he weren't getting hurt like that. He weren't, you know. Other than the Sugar Ray Leonard fight when you got hurt, but Sugar Ray Leonard's not really like Sugar Ray Leonard can punch. You know, he's not a tremendous punch or anything like that, but he's got decent power, you know, especially with the speed he has. But other than the Sugar Ray Leonard fight when he was getting hurt in that one, he wasn't really getting hurt in other fights, you know, um, up until the um, uh, the Marvin Hagler fight, you know. But after getting knocked out by Marvin Hagler like that, he didn't fight again for the rest of the year, and then he finally came back again on the 10th of March in 1986 against undefeated contender at the time, James Shuler, who was, I guess, was being hyped up. Tommy Hearns basically put an end to that very quickly, you know, stuck, got, you know, working off the jab instantly, going to uh, James Shuler's body because I think his team knows the weakness that in the James Kinchin fight where James Shuler should witness the body, went to the body and then it opened up Shuler for a shot to the head, Tommy Hearns clipped him with a big right hand and Shula was out cold. Out cold. Tommy Hearns took him just out just like that. Unfortunately, a week after the fight, Shula was killed in a motorcycle accident and Tommy Hearns took the belt that he won um, from the Shula fight and, you know, put it at um, his grave, pretty much. Um, James Shula has a brother, I believe, Andrew Shula. I think he's still alive. Um, but yeah, June 23rd, 1986, Tommy Hearns faced off against Mark Medal. Tommy has basically dominated the fight. You know, Mark Medal went down in the first round, but Tommy has dominated the fight. He got the stoppage, I think, through eye swelling or cut something on the lines of that. And then the 17th of, 17th of October, 1986, Tommy has faced off against Doug DeWitt. That fight went to 12 rounds. Doug DeWitt showed to have a very good chin. I think at that point, he'd never been knocked down, but had he been stopped before? I think he might have been stopped before, but I don't think it was really explaining how he got stopped before. No, he never been so he never been stopped before, never been knocked down. You know, he took Tommy Hearns' shots, you know, clean bang in the chin, no problem. But Tommy Hearns won the fight, 12 round decision. But Doug Witt's punch resistance, I don't think was the same afterwards, because he ended up getting knocked out in three rounds by some guy, um, I think his name's Cronones or something like that. 
you know but there you go and then on the 7th of march 1987 tommy ch challenges dennis andrews for the wc light heavyweight title to become the first guy to win three well actually he wouldn't have been the first guy wouldn't he have been because i'm pretty sure henry armstrong done it before and didn't he didn't he i'm pretty sure henry armstrong done it before so i don't know why i keep hold on let me look it up right now so i don't so i don't go around you know spreading misinformation Yeah, Henry Armstrong, yeah, he won the titles in fifth weight, lightweight, world's weight. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, okay. I was about to say Tommy Hans was the first fighter to win titles in three divisions, but he, he, he wasn't the first fighter, but he was one of the few at that time to have done it. So, anyways, back to... So, yeah, face off against Danny, Dennis Andrews and... um. Yeah, face against Danny Andrews, basically dominate the fight, drops Dennis Andrews multiple times. But Dennis Andrews actually clipped Tommy Hearns with a right hand, which actually hurt Tommy Hearns. Um, but Tommy Hearns was able to, you know, take out Dennis Andrews in the 10th round after dropping a bunch of times and dominate the fight. And he's now the WBC light heavyweight champion. He then moves back down in weight, moves back down two weight divisions to fight one Domingo Rodon. Um, he fought, previously fought Marvin Hagler. And um, he took him out in four rounds. But he also got hurt in that fight as well. And I think that's also an underrated fight. Tommy has an, a one rolled and Because even though Tommy has dropped him multiple times, you know, one rolled and still kept coming at him and he was able to hurt Tommy Hearns. But Tommy has clipped him in the fourth round and he was... I think he actually became the first fighter, for real, to win four titles, uh, win titles in four different divisions. You know, because he wanted to do middleweight before, but Marvin Hagler took him out. So he moved up to light heavyweight, won the belt there. They moved, I was going to say two weight divisions. I think I've already said that already. Apologies if I had. But I mean about one weight division because I don't think super midweight is a division back then. And, you know, he won a title against, you know, one rolled. And I don't think him moving back down to that middleweight helped him, though, with the punch resistance thing, you know, considering he fought 175 beforehand, you know, and going back to 160. He then defends his title, his middleweight title, against Iron Barkley on the 6th of June 1988 and Tommy Hearns was winning this fight he was dominating the fight he, Iron Barkley's eyes were swollen up he was kind of everything and it looked like he's already going to lose the fight but then Iron Barkley clips Tommy Hearns with a massive right hand which drops him and Tommy Hearns gets up and he's all over the place Iron Barkley you know puts a barrage against and Tommy Hearns is just slumped through the, like he gets he almost gets knocked out of the ring and that's it, you know, big upset, you know, a, a huge upset, you know, a lot of people, you know, weren't expecting that, you know, and that's just, yeah, that's just, it goes to show Tommy Hearns' punch resistance had been, you know, affected by the, you know, Hagler fight, and him moving down in weight didn't exactly help either, you know, so that was a big upset, Tommy Hearns got clipped in like three rounds, he was looking like really vulnerable at this point, really vulnerable, um, on the 4th of November 1988, Tommy Hearns faced off against James Kinchin at Super Middleweight, which was a new division at that time. He changed from the WBO title, which was also an, a new title at that point. And Tommy Hearns was winning the first couple of rounds all right. And then he got knocked down in the fourth round. And he was, he was hurt. And, you know, he was, you know, he had a point of doctor for holding because he was holding, like, really tight onto James Kinchin. And James, um, Mills Lane, who was a referee, Tried to separate, you know, the two, but Tommy Hearns kept on holding like he was really, 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 really hurt. And he could have really got knocked out in that fight. And he got the got to the point for that. You know, and uh, but you know, Tommy Hearns went to win, you know, the rest of the fight. James Kinchin won a couple of rounds, but you know, Tommy Hearns clearly won the fight. But it showed how vulnerable Tommy Hearns was looking at this point in his career, which I guess explains why um he was the underdog going into the Ray Leonard rematch. So on the 12th of June 1989, he faced off against Leonard for the rematch. All he talks about this, Tommy Hearns basically outboxed Tom, uh, uh, Ray Leonard, dropped him twice, but he did get hurt a couple of times in the process. Tommy Hearns learning, um, you know, um, from the Ray Leonard fight where he wasn't holding when he was hurt. And I think even against Hadler, he wasn't holding when he was hurt either. You know, but 
I guess after those fights, he learned his lesson and he learned to hold, and that's what helped him in this fight. The fight was really a draw, but Tommy Hearns, you know, clearly won the fight. And also, this is what I want to point out the Sugar Ray Leonard review, but I don't think it would be important because I weren't doing one on, um, on Tommy Hearns. Is this. Um, Henry Hearns, the 22-year-old brother of Tommy Hearns, was charged with first-degree murder on the day of the fight. He was accused of shooting his 19-year-old fiancé, Nancy Barali, two days earlier after his friends leaving. Barali's body was found in the bedroom of Thomas, Thomas's Detroit home. She had been shot once in the neighborhood with Thomas' 44 um, Magnum handgun. Emmanuel still told the press that Thomas was totally shot when he learned the shooting, but when the fight starts, Tommy will pull it out of his mind. Shoot at it. Henry testified his trial that the shooting occurred accidentally as he tries to rush the gun from Bro to keep her from killing herself. But Ricardo Vida, who was in the home at the time of the shooting, testified that he heard Henry friends to kill Barili moments before she was shot. Henry's convicted of second degree murder on November 22nd, 1989, and received a sentence of 25 to 50 years in prison. In 1982, Thomas agreed to pay the woman's family $685,000 to settle a wrongful death lawsuit. Henry was discharged from prison on the February 20th of 2015. Jesus Christ. Imagine having that going on in your head, you know, while you're preparing for a big fight. Lord, man, jeez. Wow. But yeah, that's the that's what I wanted to bring up. Next fight, Thomas Hines faces off against Michael Olegide after they can um, do the, uh, the third fight with him and Leonard. That was... I think he was defending the WWE Super Mario title on that one as well. Hold on. Oh my god, this come on, box right? Hurry the fuck up. Yeah, Tommy Hearns won the fight easily. He knocked that at Olegi Day, and I think Olegi Day also had a point deducted for a low blow, something long, long lines of that. You know, easy fight. And then he steps up to light heavyweight. Um, yeah, beats Ken Kemp 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 Moore and then beats Ken Atkins, you know, just stay busy fights. And then he faces off against WA Light Heavyweight World Champion Virgil Hill was undefeated at the time. Tommy Hearns came in that fight as a big underdog. You know, was seen as past his prime, which he was. I guess the Agla fight kind of took the prime out of him, even though it went on to do good things after that. Um But as soon as way past his prime, you know. Virgil will beat him. He's stepping into a weight division that he hadn't really done much, and even though he'd won the world title there, but he had one fight then, and you know, well, he had a couple of fights, you know, after that, but you know, those are against guys that no one really gave a fuck about. But Tommy Hearns pulls out one of his best career performances and outboxes Virgil, and actually a pretty good fight. You know, Virgil took the punch as well. You know, he gave Tommy Hearns a good fight, but you know, he couldn't close the distance, and Tommy Hearns was able to outbox him. Um, and when you have a decision and an upset, you know, um, I guess the Apple car is what they say. On the 20th of March 1992, he faces off in a rematch against Iron Barkley. Um, he was defending his WA World Light Heavyweight title. This time, this actually went the distance. This was a very good fight. Very, very good fight. You know, the rematch. I don't think it really gets spoken about much with, um, with the boxing fans. Um, Tommy Hearns wasn't able to keep Iron Barkley off of him, you know. This is the first time Tommy Hearns never lost a decision because you watch Tommy Hearns, he'd never been outboxed. There's not one decision you could say that he, you know, that he, you know, he didn't win, you know. Um, but Iron Barkley won the, the fight by bullying him. He couldn't outbox Tommy Hearns. He won a better boxer than Tommy Hearns. That just won his style. He had to come at Tommy Hearns and he had the physical um, dimensions to do it. Him and Tommy Hearns are around the same height, you know, same size if you if not bigger or whatnot and you know Aaron Barkley knew he had the you know punt you know the chin you know he had the toughness to take Tommy Hearns' shots so he could just go in there close the distance because it's a lot harder to keep a taller fighter off of you than it would be a shorter fighter and um what was Aaron Barkley's reach as well what was it 74 okay Tommy Hearns is what 78 so okay to be fair Aaron Barkley they have the reach disadvantage but you know when you got someone that's that taller than you and their reach their reach is like four inches shorter than yours you know yeah their reach is like four inches shorter than you but they're also like up to your height and near your size and they've already beaten you before you know so Aaron Barkley came at Tommy Hearns Tommy Hearns it basically was inside fight for the most part because Tommy Hearns tried to keep Barkley off of him but he couldn't 
So there's basically fighting from the inside for the most part, you know, off the rope, off the ropes. They didn't really fight in the center ring, if memory serves me correctly. Um, but it was a very good fight. Tommy Hearns was dropped in the fourth round by Aaron Barkley, but he actually didn't look too badly hurt, you know. Obviously, he was a bit a bit buzz, but he got up, he was able to finish the fight, and he's a very close competitive fight. I only had like Barkley winning by like one round. But yeah, Barkley beats Tommy Hearns once again. And he was able to take his belt. So Tommy Hearns wasn't able, you know, to get revenge. And, you know, after that, you know, Tommy Hearns doesn't really do much. He did fight this guy, Freddie Delgado, at Cruiserweight because he didn't move up to Cruiserweight after this. Um, I don't know if I forgot to mention that. I like heavyweight. When you see Tommy Hearns at light heavyweight, and I'm not talking about the Dennis Andrews fight, but I'm talking about, you know, um, when he's fighting in the 90s at light heavyweight, you see that his body looks a bit completely different from what 168. Like, there's a bit of flab there. You know, but you thought Freddie Delgado at Cruiserweight, a fight he, you know, he dominated, but it was a pretty good fight because he knocked down Delgado in the first round and Tommy Hearns got knocked down in the second round and De Freddie Delgado comes to fight. It's a pretty good fight, you know, pretty good fight. I wasn't really expecting it, you know, very competitive, you know, apparently Freddie Delgado is from Puncher and whatnot. I don't really know too much about him, you know, but it was a crazy fight. Tommy Hearns got hurt a couple of times in the fight too. But he was able to win the fight on points. So he gets a bunch of, you know, wins at Cruiserweight. Nothing you really care about. I think he got dropped in another fight at Cruiserweight as well. Um, I know he got dropped in another fight at Cruiserweight. I know for a fact. It wasn't just the Delgado one. Um, come on. This shit's so fucking slow. I know he got dropped in another fight, Cruiserweight, I swear. Jesus Christ. Box rack is so fucking slow these days. Um, no, I won't that one. Won't that one. Wait, 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 wait. What's that? So I'm on the Carl Willis fight. Maybe it was the Ed Dalton fight. Or maybe I'm just making this whole thing up in my head. I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got dropped another fight. But because I know he got I know he got dropped another fight, but I'm pretty sure there was another fight where he got dropped cruise away. But you know, fuck it. This thing's taking too slow. I've got to move on. But yeah, he fought against um uh Jay Snyder and um both of them knocked each other down at the same time. Yeah, a double knockdown, which is a very rare occurrence in boxing. But when Tommy Hearns knocked down, you know, um, a Snyder at the same time that he got knocked down, he actually knocked Snyder out. So imagine knocking someone out at the same time you're getting knocked down. Like that's that's a crazy power right there. And Tommy Hearns took him out. He faced off against Nate Miller on the tenth of April, nineteen ninety nine. I think that was on the Prince of Seam on the card. Beat someone twelve round United decision. I couldn't find the fight on YouTube for some reason. And then on the 8th of April 2000, he faced off against Yuri Grant, defended his IBO cruiserweight title. You know, way past his prime here. You know, not really much happened. And then Tommy Hearns ended up injuring his ankle and he was forced to, you know, forfeit the fight. And, you know, he basically got in, he start, started, you know, because um, it's supposed to be his homecoming, it's supposed to be his last fight, you know, and, um, you know, um, the whole Detroit was excited, but they got let down and, you know, Tommy was just saying, we ain't going out, I'm not going out like that. And then some guy in the crowd started talking shit and then Tommy Hearns started threatening to fuck him up. You know, apparently someone said that Tatiana Ali got into a fight with someone. Like, what? Tatiana Ali getting into a fight with someone? Are you insane? Why the hell was she getting into a fight with someone? You know, like, <laughs> I, I found that, like, I found that very, you know, hard to believe. You know, maybe they tell the truth, I don't know. But I just, I don't know. It just seemed very random to me. But Tommy Hearns never fought again until 5th July 2005. And then he fought again on the 4th of February 2006. And then he finally calls it a day because he hasn't fought since then. And that's the career of Tommy Hearns. You know, I, c I can go through this one quickly because I watched a bunch of his fights already before I even done all of this. I just rewatched them again, you know, just for the sake of this video. And because I've already, you know, done career reviews on Sugar and Leonard and Marvin Hagler. So... Tommy Hearns, he retires with a record of 61-5-1. 48 of those wins come inside the distance. 
four of his losses come inside the distance and he has one draw. A split draw in a fight that most people felt like he won. So, how good is Tommy Hearns' resume? Let's have a look. So, Pepino Quavers, that's a good win. Um, let's, let's see what else. Wilfred Benitez, another good win. Roberto Duran, another good win. Um, then you have the Ray Leonard draw, a fight I feel like he won, so I'm going to put that down. Truth be told, a lot of people feel like he won that fight. And then you got the Virgil win, which, truth be told, I looked at Virgil's record and, you know, just skim me because that's what I do, right? Because, you know, I'm not trying to waste too much time, you know, because I've done this before where I've watched fighters because, you know, I try to educate myself in the sport of boxing. I don't like, I don't want to be one of those box rep warriors that just be like, oh, this guy's record's not good because I don't know any defiers here, you know. But I've looked up on fighters' records where I literally got my time to watch you know, the guys that they beat and see their fights to see how good they are and I'd be like, oh wait, they're not good. When <laughs> I could have figured that out, or, you know, before I'd even went through all the trouble watching their fights and such. And some of the fights are really boring, but you know, that's just how it is. So I looked at Virgil's record and, you know, um I don't know, I just want didn't really stick out to me. I know he's got wins over like the likes of Henry Mask and whatnot. You know, and Henry Mars has wins over the guys like Grosjean and Rush, Rush, But I'm not going to go down a whole rabbit hole. See, like, I'm not going to go for a whole rabbit hole to see if this guy's really a good win or not. So I didn't really watch any of um, uh, uh, Virgil Hill's fights. And he also has wins over, like, Frank Tate. But, you know, and he's a light heavyweight. But I'm pretty sure Frank Tate was, like, a career middleweight for, you know, most of his career. And then you got Fabrice Teo. So I looked at his record. Didn't really see anything that interesting. But he does have good, you know... I think it's at least good look on his records when he stepped up to Cruz when he fought the likes of Jean Marc Mormec, you know, and apparently that was a close fight and whatnot. And then him and Henry Mars fought it again. So, you know, if you want to call that a good win, maybe you could, you know, those that know more about Virgil Hill's career and the guys that he's beaten, the guys that he's fought, and also the guys that he's beaten, you know, they the guys that they've been, you maybe you guys know about him more than I do, and you can say that's a good win. And um, it was a good win for Hans because he came in as you know, um, you know, just removing you know the resume argument completely. It's a good win for Hans because he came in as an underdog. He was past his prime, you know, and he was able to come in there against the guy who was on the field and you know take his belt because he was seen as like the last hurrah for Hans, you know. So removing resume aside, that looks good on his resume already. But as far as a fighter wise, Virgil Hill, I don't know. So I'm gonna put. Um, I struck that one. I've heard, I've seen some people include Dennis Andrews on Tommy Hans's resume as a good win. I mean, it's not a bad win. Don't get me wrong, but I looked on Dennis Andrews' resume and he has that trilogy with um Jeff Harden. But I also look at the guys Jeff Harden's beat and I don't really see anyone that really is you know of note. Truth be told, you know, I'm pr didn't Jeff Harden lose to Mike McKellum? He was like past his prime at that point as well. I'm pretty sure he did, you know. But yeah. And then Dennis Andrews also has a win over Tony Simpson, but Tony Simpson is not a career light heavyweight. He's a career middleweight for the most part as well. So there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So the wins Tommy Hearns has, he has uh, Cuevas, excuse me, Cuevas, um, Benitez, Duran. Um, why do I feel like I've missed the name? Um... I feel like he won a Ray Leonard fight. And if you want to include Virgil Hill, you can go ahead and do that. But, you know. So, let me do it again. Cuevas, Benitez, Duran, and Leonard. I would include Leonard. Even though that was a draw, no, I feel like Tommy has won that fight. And if you want to include Virgil, you can go do that. You know, so. Looking at it. His resume isn't exactly the deepest, but it's not the worst either because he has got he's, he has got good wins. Like Quevers was, you know, killing a lot of people at World Away, you know, um, when he was doing his thing until Tommy Hearns came in and fucked that up. Um, uh, d you know, Benitez, that's a very good win because Benitez had a very good performance against Maurice Hope at one fifty four to get his title. You know, Benitez was you know doing his thing 
after Leonard lost, because after Leonard's, Leonard lost, he was kind of having a bit of a resurgence in his career, and then after Tommy beat him, he kind of went in a downslide again. Not that Benitez was the most consistent guy, anyways. And then Roberto Ryan took him out better than anyone else could. You know, he done better than Ray Leonard did against Duran. He done better than what Benitez did against Duran. And Benitez also beat Duran as well. He dominated him, but not like Tommy Owens did. And Marvin Hagler, it was a tough fight for him. And Tommy Owens just sniped him out just like that. Um, and then Ray Leonard felt like he won that fight. And then, you know, there you, there you go. So... I've seen some people argue who has the better resume between Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard. And their resumes are not that different from each other because they fought the same people, but they had different results. Like Sugar Ray Leonard um, lost to Duran, but then beat him in a rematch, you know, easily. But Tommy Hearns took out Duran, no problem. Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, dominated Benitez, but got a questionable stoppage, while Tommy Hearns also dominated Benitez and it actually went the distance. And the sugar, I think the Benitez fight would have gone the distance for Sugar Ray Leonard, had the referee not done a, you know, a you know a poor stoppage. But there was also a fire fire that died not long before the fight. So I guess the referee was just being you know overly cautious, which is better than being too late, anyways. Um, but you can also say Sugar Ray fought a younger version of um of Benitez as well, and when he was undefeated, so you could argue that he had a better win. And then Sugar Ray Leonard beat Marvin Hagler and, you know, Tommy Hearns got taken out of three rounds by him, you know. And then, yeah, so you, you can you can make the argument there, but you can also make the argument that, you know, and then Sugar Ray also beat Tommy Hearns, but you can also make that Tommy Hearns also beat Sugar Ray Leonard in their rematch as well. So the, sem- the, resumes are, the resumes are similar, but you might have to get an edge to Sugar Ray, you know, because um, he fought younger versions of Duran, and he beat him before a younger version of Benitez and beat him. And he also lost the round as well, in all fairness. And then with Hagler, to be fair, Tommy Hearns fought the younger version of Hagler, but he also lost that fight anyways. You know, and you know, when when Sugar Ray Leonard came before Hagler, he had a bunch of disadvantages himself. You know, so it's not exactly like he had all the advantages and it was an easy win for him. No. People were predicting that Sugar Ray Leonard was getting his ass whooped. Like people wondering why the hell this fight is being sanctioned, you know, because of Sugar Ray Leonard's eye injuries. That he had um, for the past for the past couple of years, you know, but <clears throat> but yeah, and then you also some people say that Tommy Hearns also lost some of the biggest fights he had, you know, or most of the biggest fights. But you know, he didn't lose the round fight, the Benitez fight. You know, you can't say there there weren't big fights. There were, and he beat them, you know. But he does have the Iron Barkley loss that a lot of people thought goes against him. I mean. A win definitely would be better on his record than a loss. But I don't really read too much into that like that, truth be told. Like, I don't think that makes him any less of a fire for losing to Iron Barkley. I don't think it makes him any less of a fire. But, you know, it would have been better if he got on a win. You know, so I can see where people come from. But he does, his, his resume, he's got a quality resume. That he doesn't have many names. The names he does have are, you know, um, good names. Kind of like Sugar and Leonard. Like I say, their resumes are, sim- resumes are sim- similar. But, you know, same thing with Sugar Ray Leonard. He, there's some guys didn't fight. Like, he didn't fight uh, Mike McCallum. He didn't fight Donna Curry. He didn't fight, you know, Aaron Pryor in the, in, in, in the pros. You know, Aaron Pryor being the amateurs as well. You know, they didn't fight, um, you know, the light heavyweight. So apparently the light heavyweight ever when Tommy Hearns beat Virgil Hill wasn't exactly at his strongest. I don't know. I'm not too educated in the light heavyweight division. It's history like that. So, I don't know. But, you know, um, yeah, there were some guys around that time that, you know, Tommy Hearns didn't fight, much like Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, um, a lot of people say the five four really fought each other most of the time rather than fight other people. You know, but, you know, there's that. But I also hear some people try and say that Tommy Hearns is an all-time great world weight as well. No. <laughs> no. No, he didn't really do much. Okay, at world weight, all he did, right, was knock out... Quavers in two rounds, which is a good win. He fought some guys that we don't really give a fuck about, and then he lost Sugar Ray Leonard, and then he moved up, and then never came back down. Can't really come a great, great um, world to weight from that. I hope I didn't say light heavyweight, by the way. You can't call him a great world to weight from that. You know, that's 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 nothing, man. That's nothing. You know, that's that's nothing. You know, at one fifty four though, he was. I think that's the best version of Tommy Hearns. That was in his prime because he never lost at one fifty four, and he did 
get um um a good win over you know Wolf Benitez, you know at one fifty four, and you know Roberto ran too, you know. Um, that was the best version of Tommy Hearns at one fifty four, and then at one sixty he lost to Marvin Hagler, um, but he did come against James Shuler, but you know, and then Ron Walden, but you know. Nothing, you know, ov- overly special. If he was to beat Marvin Hagler at middleweight, then, you know, it would be a little bit different. But he didn't. And then he also lost to Aaron Barkley middleweight too. So there you go. Super middleweight, he had the WO tie, which wasn't highly regarded at the time. But he, I felt like he won against Sugar and Leonard. Both of them were past their prime at this point, you know, to be fair. But Tommy Hans was more active, you know. Um, but both of, them, both, both of them were past their prime. Both of them are taking damage in fights, you know, so... There you go. And then at live weight, he beat Virgil and then lost to Iron Barclay and whatnot. So there you go. So yeah, his resume isn't exactly the most, hasn't got the most depth, you know, hasn't got the most names, but he does have some decent quality names in there. Um, I don't know why I put him in terms of all-time great status. I need to, you know, study more fires to come up with a whole list for that shit, you know, but I probably would put him slightly below Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, so... He's a good fire. He's a good fire, you know. But is he like the top, top of the all time greats of the greatest fighters of the world? Nah, nah. But he's a good fire, you know. And he's a very entertaining fire. I do love watching Tommy Hearns, by the way. You know, very entertaining fire to watch. You know, I can't even say, is there one boring fight of Tommy Hearns? I can't name one boring fight that he's ever had in his career. I can't think of one, if I'm being honest with you. I don't think there's one boring fight. Every fight he's in is entertaining, you know. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to say. It's the first. I'm out. Peace.